Okay folks, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about corneal abrasions, a very, very common condition. Like 85% of closed eye injuries in the emergency room, they account for corneal abrasions. And cornea, you see, it's like a barrier. It protects our eyes from ultraviolet light. And it also causes the refraction onto the retina. And uh, many times, the foreign bodies attacks the cornea and causes inflammatory reaction that produces pain and uh, um, uh, injection and other symptoms. So I want to talk a few minutes about this uh, important uh, condition. And this is common. Corneal abrasions are common in woodpeckers and uh, even sometimes when people do like lawn mowing or metallic work. Uh, basically these uh, uh, the small pieces of foreign body they attack uh, the abrasion. The other area is like uh, people who are in sports like lacrosse or football or any sport practically speaking can hurt the cornea and then uh, people on ventilators where their cornea is exposed. People who like children especially when they are in ventilator masks some of these masks can attack the cornea and cause corneal abrasion and uh, so these are the uh, the risky professions that can cause foreign bodies to attack the eye and many times uh, it's a very uh, sensitive area so the foreign bodies can go into the anterior segment or posterior segment of the eye you need to do radiography orbital radiography to see whether there are any metallic foreign bodies sometimes even a ct scan or a spiral ct scan can help to see the metallic or non-metallic foreign bodies but in the history suggests uh, a metallic foreign body avoid an MRI uh, so that's an important point avoid MRI when the history suggests a metallic foreign body so the symptom wise it causes a lot of pain and the tearing and the foreign body sensation there is a word for a ciliary flush the ciliary flush basically means like a lot of tearing with pain from the eye. And uh, many times photophobia is a common problem and headache. You see the, uh, the eyes, uh, um, uh, eye response to the light with meiosis, the pupil constricts. And there is the ciliary spasm that's what produces a lot of pain in these patients. So corneal abrasions are caused by eye trauma and they produce an inflammatory response. And uh, these abrasions are detected by fluorescent lamp and uh, ultraviolet light. So basically you put your fluorescent stain, they're available like a small patches, like you put the fluorescent stain and you switch off the light and then you look under ultraviolet light and you will see the patches, the corneal abrasions. Whenever you see a penetrating foreign body, don't mess up with or don't mess with it. Just send them to an eye doctor for the removal. So you confirm the diagnosis with the fluorescein and ultraviolet light. And many times it is visible, very clear. I have seen so many uh, of these uh, in our office. So you use a slip, slit lamp visualization and uh, these uh, and, and use a fluorescent uh, dye and you can see and if there are foreign bodies which are not penetrating then remove them carefully without causing more damage to the eye and uh, so those are the important points about uh, the diagnosis basically you examine the eye and then uh, you use a fluorescent dye and then um, uh, you identify it and then the treatment part the treatment is like a, a pain you see it's an inflammatory response like you use NSAIDs, ibuprofen this and that what about infection can we use antibiotic drops it's a controversial area but almost everybody is using antibiotic drops like chloramphenicol ciprofloxin erythromycin and uh, these are the usual use. I usually use a ciprofloxacin eye drops, like two drops uh, every two hours, the like first two days while the patient is awake, and then two drops every four hours 
for next five days. You can also use uh, anesthesia in the beginning like tetracaine while you are examining. That gives a lot of uh, relief from the patient because it relieves the blepharospasm that patient has. You can also use cycloplasics. Basically cycloplasics they paralyze the parasympathetic system which causes meiosis because of the ciliary spasm. So when you are using a parasympatholytic like cyclopentolate or homatropin, you are basically causing the paralysis of that muscle and it gives a lot of relief from the patient because when they see the photophobia uh, is coming from that, the eye reacts with the pupil constriction and uh, when we use a parasympatholytic, we are avoiding the pupillary constriction and meiosis and gives a lot of relief from the patient. The other thing I want to talk about is ice rink sign. Basically, when there is a foreign body in the eye, especially under the upper eyelid, it can cause multiple linear uh, abrasions. So when you see multiple linear abrasions, always uh, suspect a foreign body. In fact, uh, you should suspect a foreign body in the eye every time you examine a patient with corneal abrasion because sometimes the foreign bodies can lurk. So you should always do the lid aversion and examine for any foreign bodies under the upper eyelid and under the lower eyelid. So that, that's, that's the most important thing. So, so you use anti-inflammatories for pain control, you use antibiotic eye drops like uh, as I said, ciprofloxacin, polymyxin, trimethoprim and uh, erythromycin and chloramphenicol. You can use any of them. In the United States, they don't use much of uh, chloramphenicol. So I, uh, I have uh, uh, ciprofloxacin eye drops that I use most of the times. So cor corneal abrasion is a very important thing for primary care or family medicine practice. 85% of closed injuries that come to emergency department are uh, uh, they, they have this uh, problem. So you always uh, uh, examine them carefully under their uh, eyelids and uh, you always uh, use a fluorescein eye drop and uh, under uh, ultraviolet light lamp, slit lamp examination, you can easily see these uh, corneal abrasions. Eye sitting sign is when you see the multiple linear corneal abrasions, suspect a foreign body, always examine both upper and lower eyelids, avert them and see any foreign body is remaining. And then after that, uh, um, uh, when you use the fluorescent eye, other important thing you need to remember is sometimes mucus. Mucus takes the fluorescent and gives you an impression of a corneal abrasion. But uh, the common sense is when the, as the patient blinks his eyes, the mucus plug moves around. But the corneal aberration does not move. That's an easy sign to remember. So when the mucus plug takes fluorescent eye drops, uh, and, uh, the, and, uh, uh, it's a false sign. Don't fall for that. See, is it moving or not? If it is moving, then it's not corneal aberration. Uh, if it is... Uh, uh, so you need to think, is there a mucus plug or something else here? So corneal abrasions don't move and uh, you, you identify them like that. And the treatment wise, anti-inflammatories, antibiotics and the patches, they are not much useful if the abrasion is less than 10 millimeters in size. Don't use patches because they are useless. And the cycloplegics can be used because they cause parasympathetic paralysis and ciliary spasm uh, is prevented and patient get relief